Hey guys, Zinc here with another review. This time of the Zip Nano Propel. Let's get into it. Now that we have everything unboxed, we're just look at some manuals. Really don't need those, put those aside. Um, some more manuals, just in English and French. Again, not really needed. One thing I was a little surprised is this actually says join the join the Flyers Club. It actually gives you, I think, about a year of free parts. Uh, if anything breaks or anything's malfunction, you just sign up, and from your sign up date, you get all your free little parts, anything that breaks. So this bag here, we'll just uh, open that up. Comes with these little knobs. Um, took me a little bit, but those knobs actually go onto the bottom of the controller for better stability. Let me just look at our charging cord. This charging cord actually plugs directly into a USB and into the device itself. These are the batteries for the controller, and then these are your extra blades, standard AB blades that you think would come with any other propeller. And these are actually little knobs that can be placed on the controller, and you'll see right here that I placed the knobs on it. As we go ahead and look at the controller, they have some rubber pads in the back just for your fingers to sit. And then at the top, we have our stunt and speed button, one to three, it's your settings for speed. Um, and then on the controller here itself, you can see that my hand doesn't fit too well. And that's where these little rubber blocks come in pl to play. You just snap them onto the bottom of the controller. And as you can see, that fits your hand a lot more naturally, so your hands aren't as cramped. And then we just have our throttle up and down button uh, stick there. At the top of the controller here, you see that this is just for adjusting your trim on your device. And at the bottom, we have three channel and four channel. This is just to switch channels, just in case someone else is using the same channel as you. We turn the device on. And we see speed one at the top. Now you can't actually change the speed while the control while the actual drone's not on. So you have to go ahead and turn the drone on. When you turn the drone on, you'll see the lights will flash. You have to hit up and down on the controller, and it will sync. Now we're going to look at the USB charger for this uh, drone. Simple USB charger. You plug it in. There's actually a red light that will come on. Uh, you just take this end, and then you plug it into the drone itself, which is nice. You don't have to worry about plugging it into a battery and having to worry about that. The cord's simple on-off switch. Just plug it right in here underneath the propeller. It goes in pretty snug and secure. Now the light for the battery indicator will actually come on right where my thumb is right here. It will only come on once the device is completely charged. It will not come on when it is charging. A little confusing at first but you get used to it quite quickly. As we look at the actual device itself, you have two sets of lights. The white lights are indicating the front of the device and the red lights are indicating the back. We have the on off switch there. And then we have our charge area where we just plug the cord in where I showed you earlier. And then we have this protective net. It actually comes off really, really easily. No screwing or unscrewing of blades. It just pops right off. I do recommend whenever you fly it, you would use the cage. If you're anything like me, I'm, I am a good flyer, but you know what? You're going to accidentally hit something and you're going to damage those blades. So I just wanted a size comparison. So this is my Huxon. Um, it's pretty much the exact same size, except for the Hudson has bigger propeller motors themselves. Um, and I believe the battery is bigger itself. We're going to go ahead and fly this drone outside and while I'm flying it you can see how it performs so I'll talk a little more about the drone. Um, for $30 I thought yeah I'm going to have problems with this, it's going to be a cheap little drone, it's not going to respond well, it's going to have bad range, bad battery life, but I was actually quite surprised this thing handled better than my Hudson di uh, does and did. Um, the Hudson does have a few things that I do like about it, mainly it's the controller. The only thing I don't like about this drone is the controller. The controller is just too small, at least for my hands. Uh, I'd say I'm an average size guy, so I don't think I have ginormous hands or anything. But I just wish the controller sticks were just a little bit longer so you can actually feel um, when you're adjusting the speed and elevation. 
Uh, I was actually able to take the device probably up to three stories high. After about that, I started losing connection. I could tell it just would hover there. Uh, I smashed on the ground a couple times. That's where the video just kind of clipped there. Uh, you'll see me actually going up. This is about two stories, and then I just said go all the way up. That's about three. And the video will cut out just because I lost the control of it right there. Brought it back down just to see what it would perform like. In the end, would I recommend this? For $30, if you're starting out in this field, if you're starting out getting into, into drones, 100% go and grab it. You break it, go to Costco, buy another drone for $30, and take advantage of that warranty for a year. Because you know what, if something breaks, then you can just get it replaced. Hope you guys liked that video. If you do, give me a like, give me a share. Uh, if you guys want, I am also on Instagram, so you can follow me on there. Mainly just use the stories for behind the sneak peek stuff, you know, what might be coming up, what I'm doing now. Until the next one, see you guys later.